a question that comes up over and over again regarding Catholic teaching is, can it change? Can the doctrines and dogmas of the Catholic Church change over time? And the reason this question keeps coming up is because depending on who you ask, you will tend to get different answers trending towards whatever that person's particular partisan preferences are. And a well-established concept within Catholic theology that routinely emerges within the midst of this conversation is what's known as the development of doctrine, because it's often used to explain anything that appears to be an innovation or even an aberration, again, depending on who you ask. And whenever traditionally minded or traditionalist Catholics lament some change that people are trying to advance, progressive Catholics will often say things like, come on, come on, man. It's just the development of doctrine. That guy, St. John Henry Newman, you know, the guy that you guys like, he said it was all good. I guess for some reason, I think all progressive Catholics sound like Joe Biden. Come on, man. This concept and the practice of the development of doctrine, you could say it's caused a lot of problems in the church because most people don't understand what it means. Or if they do, many have used the fact that many people don't understand what it means and exploited it to advance their own activist agenda. So this is going to be my dead level best attempt to try to explain what it is and what it isn't, especially to help you the next time someone comes along and references it as an attempt to distort Catholic teaching. So if you aren't familiar with St. John Henry Newman to get started with, he was a traditional theologian, clergyman and eventually a cardinal in the Catholic Church, but he was also a convert from the Anglican Church, which is probably why he was such a profound thinker. Many of the most renowned converts to Catholicism or even just Christianity in general have been some of its greatest thinkers precisely because they had to work through some of the most difficult questions on their way home. People like St. Augustine, G.K. Chesterton, C.S. Lewis, or St. John Henry Newman come to mind. One of the difficulties or challenges that Newman had to work through, which is common among Protestants, is how to reconcile apparent additions or innovations in Catholic theology that seem to be absent from scripture or the early days of the church, concepts like purgatory or the perpetual virginity of Mary. And as he worked through these, he developed this concept known as the development of doctrine, which seems to have won the assent and admiration of both progressive Catholics and traditional Catholics who both bring their own interpretation to what is meant by it. In the hopes of explaining what it is and what it isn't, I've come up with an analogy that may run the risk of embarrassing myself a little bit because in my what limited spare time I can find, sometimes I like to paint landscape paintings. And if you're familiar with painting or you've ever watched someone create a landscape painting. No pressure, just let it float. You'll know that there is a methodology known as blocking in, where you, you create very primitive impressions of your colors and your shapes, and then you spend the rest of your time refining that into a more detailed painting. So it goes from something very crude and primitive to something very refined and detailed. So here, for example, is a painting that I've only begun and I've only blocked it in. Um, as you can tell, it's going to be a painting of the Rocky Mountains with a lake in it. But what this what this painting doesn't explicitly show is that there's going to be snow caps and glaciers in these mountains. These mountains will have a, a more detailed rocky surface. These tree lines will have more details in them. There will be ripples and reflections in the water. And there will probably even be some, some treetops appearing in the, the bottom foreground. And while those details aren't explicitly present in the painting as it currently is, you could say that they are strongly implied or that the painting calls for them. The painting requires those details to become complete and easy, easy to understand for anybody who might look at it. And none of those developments contradict what the painting currently is. They are intuitive elaborations of what the painting should become. So too are the doctrines which have developed through the centuries of the church. You will often hear Protestants object to Catholic theology by saying things like, where is purgatory in scripture? In the same way, you could look at that painting and, and, and see the finished version of it and say, well, where were those glaciers in the beginning? Well, in a way, they were there because they're so strongly implied. There's a place for them and the shapes are all composed in the mountains so as to receive their placement. The word purgatory may not be in scripture, but it is strongly implied through the whole theological narrative. The church in her time just gave it the necessary explicit detail so that it could be better understood. Newman pointed out that many of the Christological doctrines that Protestants take for granted developed in the exact same way. The Trinity is not explicitly defined in scripture, but it is there if you look for it. The two natures of Christ or the hypostatic union, again, are not explicitly defined in nature, but or in scripture, but if you study it, it's there. 
What Newman was demonstrating was how apparent changes aren't changes from one thing into another. The development of doctrine is a way of holding fast to the traditions while explaining how those traditions have been refined over the centuries. So returning to this analogy of the painting, as it goes from being blocked in to a completed work, it doesn't change from one type of painting into another. It doesn't go from a mountainscape into a seascape or from a forest into a portrait of the president. It goes from something that is primitive and elemental and essential into something that is more explicit and clearly itself. Now this stands in sharp contrast to what Pope St. Pius X described as the evolution of doctrine, which is this, this idea that the teachings of the church should fluctuate and change according to our fancies and fashions of thought so that it's pliable in the hands of progressives. St. Pius X explicitly condemned and anathematized this idea as part of the modernist heresy. And sadly, it not only lives on in the church, but it, it has many high profile uh, advocates who, who want to advance this idea that we should be changing the doctrines of the church and who, who invoke the development of doctrine to try to pacify faithful Catholics who object when they see this agenda. So no, development of doctrine does not mean that Catholic teaching should change or evolve over time. It only means that the traditional doctrines of the church become more clearly understood over time. But with all that said, I, I do sympathize with movements within the church who, who want to get back to basics, which isn't something that is relegated to the Catholic church. You actually see this in non-Catholic and Protestant denominations as well. Because if you think about it, a theology, an intellectual tradition that develops over centuries and centuries of time is something that can become so refined and so detailed that it can overwhelm people that are trying to understand it, especially people from the outside looking in, potential converts. And in that process of development, it's possible that so many details can get added for the sake of just adding details. Think about generations of theologians who want to make their mark on the history of the church. And so they just they add some more detail to something even when it's not necessary. So that, that beautiful painting, that landscape painting can become something where there's like a squirrel and a tree in every single tree branch. For traditionally minded Catholics like myself who attend the extraordinary form of the mass and who, who appreciate a traditional rendering or like a scholastic rendering of Catholic theology, it's easy to lament and speculate about why so much of our Catholic tradition and heritage and culture was stripped away in the 20th century, even by seemingly orthodox and well-intentioned Catholics like Pope St. John Paul II. But I also hear stories of what early 20th century Catholicism was like. And while it may not be true across the board, you do have to start wonder. You hear stories about how mass attendance was very high, but how clergy and lay people were often just reenacting a faith that they, they didn't understand. It was like a very beautifully ornamented building with nothing inside. And perhaps the reason that they didn't understand it was because it was like this very detailed and ornamented painting that was so detailed that it was easy to get distracted by the details and lose an appreciation for the essentials of it. For example, I've met a lot of Catholics who know a lot about and maybe are even preoccupied with the secrets of Fatima, but who don't know the Ten Commandments. I can think of a lot of Catholics who can recite the, the luminous mysteries of the rosary, but who don't know what the cardinal virtues are. When our theology becomes so richly detailed that you can lose the forest for the trees, I can understand why God would allow some of those details to fade away. I don't know if all of those accounts of early 20th century Catholicism are true, but if they are, I can understand why we weren't able to inherit that rich cultural tradition. We didn't deserve it. It's kind of like we're trust fund kids waiting for our big payday with no appreciation for how that wealth was, was earned in the first place. And perhaps we are now experiencing a time of exile and, and desert so that we will be forced to rediscover that knowledge before tasting its fruits. Hey, thanks for watching that. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to like and subscribe for more. And if you want to support the making of content like this, then please consider joining my online community, The Reinforcements. It's, it's kind of like Patreon, but instead of being beholden to a big tech company, it's a website I built entirely myself. So there's no risk of us being censored or shut down or anything like that. There are hundreds of people who have already signed up and our mission is to renew and reinforce the church. So if that's you, then, then come check it out. As an added bonus for certain tiers, I will also send you a gift box from Glory and Shine, which is a Catholic family owned and operated company 
Um, they make bath and body products. They're actually their beard balm. I'm, I'm supporting or I'm, I'm sporting right now. I'm not just a spokesperson. I'm actually a customer. So even if you don't join the reinforcements, maybe check them out anyways. Glory and Shine, they're, they're an amazing company.